Hey guys, it's Jared Beard Dragon from RDA. Got another review today. This one's of something a little bit, a little bit different. This is of the 1911 Carbine. Now, this does come with the 1911. It's a WE 1911, and it does come with a magazine as well. So you're not going to get just the kit. Uh, you will also be getting a 1911 inside of the kit. Now, this is basically exactly what it sounds like, a 1911 Carbine. In short, you just slide a 1911 into here, and then you have a full-sized, uh, almost SMG-sized carbine. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, there's a few things, and uh, I'm going to mention something else before that. I would highly recommend picking up some sort of a foregrip or something up in the front, because uh, it's, it's not as comfortable to hold it by the rails in the front as if it would be to hold the foregrip itself, obviously. Sort of a no-duh type thing to say. Uh, but I would highly recommend picking up a foregrip. It may not, it may make it look a little bit strange, but um, that's all up to the uh, eye of the beholder, I guess. The next thing I would recommend you pick up is a red dot to fully utilize this top rail. Now, as I was saying before, why would you want to put your pistol into a carbine? Why would you make, want to make it a little bit larger? Well, three major reasons why you would want to do that. For one, holding a pistol out in front of you is going to lower the accuracy for multiple different reasons. One, no matter who you are, you won't have 100% steady hands. This depends on the person. Uh, my hands are pretty steady, but still, it's always going to be more steady shouldering a gun than holding a gun out in front of you. Uh, two, when you have a gun shouldered, you have more of a tendency to be smaller. And I'll go over this more later in the video. And um, it, it's, it's better for when you're in a game. It makes you smaller, harder to shoot. And overall, it's just better for combat. It, it's, really no hard, it's really hard to explain it without really fully demonstrating and again I'll go over that more later in the video. And the third and major thing, when you're shooting a pistol, the trigger pull and the recoil throws your shot off uh, quite a bit depending on how you grip the gun. No matter who you are, you can never fully get rid of this problem. Now you can minimize it to the best of your ability, but you can't minimize it as much as if you were shouldering it. Now if you don't know what I mean here, let me go ahead and explain. When you pull the trigger on a pistol and it recoils, it kind of throws it off to the side a little bit. Now, like I said, there are different ways to grip it. That's why you shouldn't have your fingers cross-threaded or cross-thumbed like that. You know, there are different ways to grip it to try to minimize that. But like I also said, you can never fully get rid of it. However, when you are shouldering it, this problem is totally gone. One, the gun is very steady. Two, your shoulders are smaller. You're, you're not a t you don't have a tendency to broaden your shoulders when you shoot. Uh, so you're smaller overall. And three, when you pull the trigger, it won't kick it off to the side. Because one, your front hand is steadying it, and two, the recoil will go directly backward into your shoulder instead of backward and sort of upward from you bending your elbows and your wrist. So there's the major reasons why you would want to, and it does really make a giant impact on the accuracy of your gun when you put it into carbine form opposed to when you put it in pistol form, even if you don't change the length of the barrel or anything in the gun itself, which is the case for here. Now let me go over the quality of the gun and go back to the regular review type things now that I've said that. So what the gun is made out of is uh, strong polymer mostly. The actual body and everything is very, very strong plastic and I can't see it breaking on you anyway. The rails are full rails and there's a full rail across the top, two on each side and one on the bottom. Now like I said earlier, I'd highly recommend putting a red dot on here. And that's also, the, the other thing I meant to say is that a red dot, put, being able to put a red on here is better than the standard 1911 sights or pistol sights. I forgot to mention that. Uh, but yes, it does have a full rail, so you can do whatever you want with that. You can put, I don't know, a laser or a flash on the side if you really wish to. Uh, foregrip on the bottom or something else. Hell, you could put a grenade launcher on the bottom of your carbine if you really wanted to do that. be a little ridiculous, but you could. So, uh, the quality of it is great quality. I wasn't thinking it would be bad. Uh, but I wasn't expecting it to be overall this solid. So it's definitely a solid, solid gun. Now the other thing I need to talk about is the stock. As you see, I have an M4 stock in here, but this is actually a gas blowback M4 stock and buffer tube that it took off of a well M4. Um, something I need to explain about the stock. The stock simply screws right in, so the vast majority of AEG buffer tubes won't actually work with this, and I'll show you what I mean with that. Well, I screwed this on a little bit too tight, so I'll just explain what I mean. Basically, there's just threads in the back of the gun. So most of your AEG buffer tubes aren't actually going to work on it because you need to be able to screw in the gun. Uh, screw in the buffer tube, I mean. I'm sorry. 
So gas bull like M4 stocks and buffer tubes are going to work perfectly. AEG stocks themselves will work perfectly, but most AEG buffer tubes won't. I have found that some AEG buffer tubes uh, will work on this though. If there is threading on the back of the buffer tube, it will work with it. So you just got to make sure you have the right one before you do it, before you get a, a buffer tube in stock. Uh, so, other than that, I can't really see that as much of a con for the gun, because uh, it works with the stock gun on it. It works flawlessly. There's no wobbling on it. I don't have to worry about it unscrewing or any of that. So, but I would highly recommend putting a stock in here. And if you didn't want a stock, you can actually run without a stock either way. Um, don't see why you wouldn't want a stock, but you don't need a stock and you don't need a buffer tube to use the gun. Now, how does the gun work? It pretty much just works like a standard 1911. Uh, the whole basic controls of the 1911 are here. Start the mag, the mag release is still there, the mag, uh, the, the slide release is still here, but you kind of have to be able to use a little bit of your nail because it's, it's dug under. However, if the slide is locked back, and this is how you cock it, this little lever here. If the slide is locked back and you insert a fresh mag, you can simply pull back on here and it'll go forward. Now this takes a little bit of a while for that to actually uh, break in. At first, it, it won't go back if you pull it. If you just kind of pull this piece at first, it'll stay locked there, but after a little bit of a while, uh, it'll wear down and just fall forward when you let go. So you don't have to worry about the slider release being a little bit a little bit tough to get. Other than that, there's not much more to say. It's just a, it's a 1911 carbine. I know a lot of people have been interested in it, and here it is. And uh, let's just show you a few clips. Let's go outside and shoot it. All right, now we're outside and I'm gonna shoot this thing and demonstrate some of the things I was talking about earlier. So the first one is the most obvious one. Shoulder or weapon, a lot more sturdy than holding it out. The next one that's not so obvious to a lot of people is that holding out a gun, you have a tendency to make your body uh, a little bit more square, a little bit larger uh, than if you were shouldering it. And when you're in combat, you want your body to be as small as possible. So that's something that's going to be a big advantage if you switch back over to this for a carbine version of your pistol instead of being a little bit more bulky when you're shooting. And then the third thing is trigger pull. When you're holding it out, the recoil will kind of throw it up to the side if you pull the trigger a little bit wrong. Now, there's almost no way to completely avoid this. There's a way to minimize it to the best of your ability, but there's no way to really completely avoid recoil kicking up to the side depending on how you pull the trigger. There's ways to adjust to it, get a better stance and everything, but there's just no way to fully avoid that. This, this does fully avoid that, because once you have a foregrip, once it's shouldered, it totally takes out the trigger pull problem. So let's go ahead and just shoot this. I'm gonna show you two different angles. Got a fully loaded up WE mag, 15 rounds, propane. Shoot half the mag this way, then I'm gonna switch to another camera angle. All right, now over the shoulder, rest of the magazine. And we are out of BBs. And if you heard, it kind of gives a nice loud thunk when you shoot it compared to the regular uh, 1911. Kind of gives off a, just a little bit different acoustic than normal. All right, now that I've shot it, let's throw in a few slow motion clips uh, just for the sake of it. All right, and there you go. There's been the review of the 1911 Carbine. If you guys want to buy this gun, you can go to www.reddragonairsoft.net or you can click on the link down below in the video information. So with that said, that's been Red Dragon Airsoft's review of the 1911 Carbine.